recently I've been really loving the look of these rustic skinny benches that I've been seeing pictures all over Instagram and Pinterest. But when I shop online at the big furniture brands and also on Etsy, I see that they're selling for two, three hundred dollars at least. So I decided to make my own. In terms of cost, the wood that I picked up at Home Depot only cost me less than ten dollars, and the work took me maybe six, seven hours. So I think if you really like the skinny bench, it's definitely worth giving this project a try. These are my supplies. I have one 2x6 and two 2x3s. At Home Depot, when I was picking out my wood, I purposely picked wood that was more beat up. You can see all the imperfections. Um, this works well because I want a rustic themed skinny bench. All I checked for at Home Depot was to make sure that the wood pieces were straight. I didn't want a crooked piece of wood in case that impacted the balance of my bench. So here are the pocket holes I've drilled. The pocket holes are on the bottom of the support and on the inside of the legs. Um, except this piece, I made a mistake. But I'm not too concerned because I'm going to fill in these holes after I've drilled in the screws with the pocket hole wood filler. And also because the wood legs are going to be very roughed up and scratched up, the pocket hole should not be very visible. <laughs> so um, I got these wire brushes that you can attach to your drill, um, they're very sharp so they're going to help to rough up and make the wood more rustic. They come in all different um, shapes and sizes and then over here I have a chisel set so I kind of just picked any one off Amazon that had a good review so you can buy the one you want or I will also leave a link for the ones that I purchased and you can take reference. When you're doing this, first look at the direction of your drill. So for my one, it's going in this direction. So when I move on the wood, I want to go in the opposite direction so that this um, tool doesn't run away from me. For example, this is going with the same direction. It just runs away really quickly. But if I go in the opposite direction, 
there's a bit of resistance, I can work slower and create more texture on the piece of wood. So here is a completed piece. You can look at the difference between this versus a normal piece. So I think the chisel and the wires was really great tools. So the chisel really helped in terms of changing the shape. I love that the wood no longer is very rectangular in form. And the wire brush really helped to bring out more texture like this area. And you can see the lines over here. Yep, so don't be scared to rough it up too much and remember to wear gloves so that you don't hurt your hand or get splinters. Once I've finished everything, I still have to sand it smooth so that it won't have any splinters and hurt anyone who touches or sits on the bench. So here I have two pieces of wood. One I have gone through with the wire attachment and roughed up and scratched up all the surfaces and one that I haven't. So let's look at the difference between the two pieces. You can see that the one that has had the scratches has a lot more texture. Look at the big differences over here, over here. And these um, roughness and scratches are really going to show up when I apply the stain. So yeah, don't be scared to overdo it. Really go through, give it a lot of scratches and texture um, because that's what's going to give it more character and that rustic look. And you're definitely going to lose some of that roughness during the sanding process. Thank mm -hmm. you.
So this brings us to the end of the project. In the coming weeks, I hope to make another rustic style bench for the foot of our bed in our bedroom. But I'm thinking of making some variations to the legs. So if you're interested in something like that, then definitely subscribe and follow along.